So this is basically my first note and an attempt to explain what I finally understood through a talk with my doctor who is treating me for ADHD. As many of my subscribers know, I have ADHD in adults, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Some people have ADD, which is... Uh, attention deficit disorder but they're not hyperactive like one of my very good friends me I'm hyperactive too so anyway um, when I was with the doctor he was already t saying what I was going to ask him but uh, I interrupted because I wanted to show him something uh, first of all, in the blood pressure, I showed the nurse that I could, uh, using uh, samadhi or using a certain um, meditational practice within myself, <coughs> uh, trick her from raising or lowering my blood pressure from 106 to 148 at will within a space of three seconds, which confused her. So in the end, I let her do it at a total relaxed and I had a normal blood pressure. But the first time she took my blood pressure, I lowered it to a very worrisome level. And then told her I tricked her, because before she took it, I said, is it possible to trick this machine? And she said, no. So I was tempted. I'm a naughty bit of a, a mischievous person. And I like to prove people wrong when they are. And then went in to see the doctor. And I was explaining to him, so uh, what I did was something some of you have seen me demonstrate a long time ago, and many of you can do it, there's nothing special about it, but it does have to do with meditation. So I showed the doctor that uh, within a space of three or four seconds I could make my skin be covered in goosebumps and cause piloerection, which means the hairs on your neck and your arms and your legs all stand up with static electricity. And so he looked at that. He says, oh, you're quite good. At, you can uh, control that too. <clears throat> and then he began to explain why the difference between why a person with ADHD who has a very short attention span or a very scattered attention span, because m actually I'm very, very, very focused. I'm so ultra-focused that my parents took me to see a psychologist as a child because the teacher was throwing pieces of chalk at my head after calling my name six times. It's not that I wasn't concentrating. It's that I was concentrating on cloud-busting. I was looking at shapes in the clouds out the window and I was so focused on that that I couldn't hear anything outside of my own world. But I was extremely concentrated... I was in jhana. I was in a complete ab state of absorption with the clouds. But they thought I, I was deaf. I had hearing problems, so they sent me for a hearing test. The doctor said I had nothing wrong with my hearing, <coughs> and that was the end of it. After that, everybody decided I was just a, some kind of problematic child or something, because uh, ADHD was not a topic back in, the, in those days. So anyway, the doctor went on to explain something that I also explain in Vipassana, especially and in uh, those who practice the four satipatthanas, the four bases of um, mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of the feelings, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of all other phenomena or dhammas. Uh, those who practice that. Uh, when the second stage is Vetana, Nupasana Satipatthan, the Vetana Satipatthana, which means mindfulness of your emotions and your feelings and your sensations. And of course, m through mindfulness, you become aware of the power they have on you and how they cause your thoughts to react and your behavior to react and cause suffering and how impermanent they are and so on. And so... Um, I can concentrate on seven different things at the same time. I'm, I've got 17 things in my head which I'm focusing and planning all simultaneously, like a multitasker. So, uh, actually, you know, attention, de attention span, what society calls attention span, is, uh, <coughs> is if you want to just do one thing at a time. So, a, no a normal person without what without having this invented uh, condition called ADHD, which is a medical uh, word and an invention to take a thousand people who 
have similar problems but each person's different and put them all in one cubby hole. But actually every person with ADHD in dittos does not behave or suffer the same way. It's different with every person. So anyway, what the doctor said was, the thing is, the attention span thing when you're trying to work and get your daily work done, if you have ADHD, it's problematic because you have a very short or a very scattered attention span or a hyper-focused attention span that easily distracts you from one thing to the other and makes you forget because you're 100% absorbed in whatever you focus on. So if something distracts you, you're gone. And hours later, you realise you didn't finish the email you were writing. <laughs> or you do, like me, I do 10, 20 things at once, and it takes all day to get them finished. But then I press 20 save buttons, and all of a sudden I've got 20 posts which refer to each other, link to each other, and research each other and are connected to each other. So for me that works. It's actually a really uh, very complex way of doing things that most people who don't have ADHD cannot do. And it's why you see me create so much content and share it every day on the internet. A lot of people say, I don't know how you do it. How do you manage to get all of that stuff up there? And I usually answer by saying, well, by sitting in front of the computer for 18 hours every day. But anyway, the problem is with ADHD, don't think you can't meditate. Because actually people with ADHD can meditate very, very well. What they can't do is get on in a world that expects you to do things in stages in the beginning stage, the middle stage and the end stage in a sequence. It's very difficult. A fill out a government application form is very difficult for somebody with ADHD. Because the second question they ask you to fill out already makes you say I can't fill that out because I don't know yet why this or that and when you get further down the form you realize that actually they do get to that later but you don't realize it if you've got ADHD you just get to question two and say I can't answer that because I have to include this other information too for that to be accurate but they do ask for that other information separately later according to their <laughs> sequence and process which I having ADHD I cannot function with government or system or social processes one reason I am a recluse and that's why I'm lucky I can make money from my, my home on the internet it really is but back to meditation the doctor said that this is not a psychological problem it's a physical problem it's actual a physical deficiency. There, we're talking about endorphins and the myosin, the myosin um, uh, molecules that will take the endorphin, the myosin, uh, what do you call them, myosin particles or whatever. These little guys with short legs, they look like worms with short legs, and they carry this big ball like Sisyphus carrying the rock up the hill along your cells and bring it to your brain. And the big ball's endorphins, that's happiness. And so when, when they carry these things into your brain, you feel happy or confused or sad or whatever. They have all of these chemical things inside us. And so it's chemical and physical, the state of ADHD. And you have to take medicine to get your daily work done. If you have to write a, doc a Word document for your company and stay focused and make the right references and citations and stuff, you'll definitely need some medical treatment. But that doesn't mean you can't meditate because meditation is psychological and mental and spiritual, whereas ADHD for daily work is a physical and chemical problem, right? The next thing is meditation is you're not supposed to stop your mind from thinking, the br your brain from thinking, because the purpose of the brain is thinking, and it will never stop thinking until actually the electrical uh, field ceases to exist, meaning you're dead. What you're supposed to do is to still the mind through focus on the breath, yeah, and still the heart, 
And so with me as ADHD, what I do, because I'm super focused, I can't focus on one thing at a time unless I've taken my medicine. I'm focused on three things at the time. So I might focus on the kata, buddho, buddho, and at the same time be aware of the breath passing through my nostrils, and at the same time be aware of how my emotions are arising and fading and changing, and my thoughts are arising and fading and changing. And uh, if you are still in that moment, it's about being still. Once you achieve stillness, that's meditation. And once you achieve that still heart and mind, you can then sit and observe and watch your brain thinking and watch your heart feeling and watch the interchange like a game of ping pong. You can watch the brain think something, think of an enemy. You can watch the heart then jump up in revenge or anger or resentment. And then you can watch that resentment ping pong ball bounce back to the brain and see the brain expand on it and make itself even angrier. Or maybe if you're being mindful, it would say, this is wrong view. This is just the physical process of what evolution has programmed my brain for self-survival. I'm not going to take any notice of it. I'm above it. I'm just going to forgive that person because this is just a chemical reaction of the brain sending messages to the emotional area. If a lion approaches a buffalo who has uh, children, has babies, the buffalo will see the lion, will remember the lion, will then class it as an enemy, and as soon as the brain has thought that, anger will arise and adrenaline will flow and it will go into battle mode. That's physical, you can't avoid it. You can watch it and uh, remove yourself from it and notice the power of it. And also notice how it arises and fades, which proves uh, impermanence. And that helps you, of course, to let go of it. But yeah, if you've got ADHD and you can't focus on one thing, focus on three things at the same time. Absorb your mind, give yourself something to absorb yourself with. And in fact, one of the uh, the first Satipatthana of the four Satipatthanas, the four bases of the practice, uh, is mindfulness of the body. And that is done through uh, focusing of mindfulness on the breath. And the 16 stages of mindfulness of breath, right? The first one, they always tell you to focus on the tip of your nose and try to be aware of the breath passing through your nostrils. But a more advanced step is then you have to be simultaneously aware of the breath passing through the nostrils, through the throat, the swelling of the chest, and the arrival of the air down at the bottom of the abdomen, and likewise going back the other way. So that's focusing on um, two or three to five things at the same time whilst you are noticing being mindful and through insight not through uh, pathological thought in words just through insight noticing truths within there and so if you have adhd don't worry just learn to still your mind use the breath focus on the breath on the nostrils if that doesn't work and you're getting distra- distracted focus on your nostrils and the breath in your chest and your abdomen all at the same time see if that's enough to keep you occupied so that's um episode one of uh successful meditation for adhd sufferers that's a john spencer for my own project, the Buddha Magic Project and any other project I've got going and to help people with ADHD to believe in themselves and to try to meditate because you can and many people will find they can do it a lot better than open ditto normal people close ditto. I hope you all have a nice day and if you've got ADHD take this and go try a meditation session which means watch your breath Have a nice day, everybody.